Welcome to worship with us at St Paul and St Stephen's Gloucester on the 27th of September 2020 for the fourth week of Creation Tide. We'll take just a few moments of quiet wherever we are to prepare ourselves to come more fully into the presence of the living God, Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Spirit of God hovered over the water, and brought life to all creation. Come, Holy Spirit, and renew the face of the earth. For the wrong we have done against God and our neighbour, Human sin disfigures the whole of creation, which groans with eager longing for God's redemption. We confess our sins in penitence and in faith. We confess to you our lack of care for the world you have given us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our selfishness, in not sharing the earth's bounty fairly. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our failure to protect resources for others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself, Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Leviticus, chapter 25. The Lord said to Moses at Mount Sinai, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land I am going to give you, the land itself must observe a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years sow your fields, and for six years prune your vineyards and gather your crops. But in the seventh year, the land is to have a year of Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. Do not sow your fields or prune your vineyards. Do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the grapes of your untended vines. The land is to have a year of rest. Whatever the land yields during the Sabbath year will be food for you, for yourself, your male and female servants, and the hired worker and temporary resident who live among you, as well as for your livestock and the wild animals in your land. Whatever the land produces may be eaten. Our New Testament reading is from the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 4. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us, just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them, because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said, So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. 
and yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day God rested from all his works. And again in the passage above he says, They shall never enter my rest. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience, God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest, so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? And Jesus said, have people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About five thousand men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. And when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. And so they gathered them, and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus performed, they began to say, Surely this is the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We hear in our readings today about God's cycle of rest that he offers us in the Sabbath and also a promise of provision if we take that rest the abundance of nature around us by leaving the land fallow and in our gospel reading of Jesus' provision with the loaves and the fish. We read countless times in the Bible about the importance to keep the Sabbath. It's one of our Ten Commandments. And yet, how many of us actually do it? How many of us struggle 
to keep any Sabbath time at all. And this isn't about closing the shops on a Sunday. We live in a world where everything is now available almost 24 seven. And it is up to us to find our Sabbath in a world that never stops. Nicholas Slee has written about the Sabbath in a book called Sabbath, the hidden heartbeat of our lives. She writes these words. The natural world, with its annual cycles of birth and death, flourishing and waning, harvesting and decay, can teach human beings a respect for similar cycles within our own individual, social and communal lives. In the city which never sleeps, rather like the machine which never stops, we can easily be deluded into supposing that we too can live without recourse to rest, sleep and cessation, or at least to recognise our need for these only begrudgingly and when at the edge of our limits. I find those words to be really true. How many of us feel that we can simply keep going? We must keep going. How many of us operate at the edge of our energy? This year has been difficult for almost all of us. And many people now are tired and weary. And yet, so many of us still struggle to find that satisfying Sabbath rest that God offers us. It's a rest of not just doing nothing. It's not a rest of recreation. But that rest that fuels and rejuvenates and refills you, ready to carry on living again. It's a good time to think about Sabbath. The seasons are turning. We're just entering properly into autumn. The world around us is starting the work of closing down for its winter sleep. And perhaps this year, in this season of creation tide, we could learn from nature. Some more words from Nicholas Lee here. Withdrawing for a time, she writes, however brief, into the wild spaces that still exist, offers a reprieve from this fast-paced, furious urban living. To respond to the invitation into the woods, is to offer ourselves an opportunity to gaze on beauty and decay. The two go together, not to be parted. To stretch our cramped and stressed bodies into revivifying exercise. To rest in the deep darkness of the countryside and to see beyond the horizons of a man-made environment into a sky studded with lights from a thousand planets, thousands of light years away. Such stepping aside into the space of the woods not only rests and restores our bodies, but renews and revitalises our minds and reminds us that it is possible to live at a different pace and in touch with wider, more elemental horizons than those by which we are habitually enclosed.
this renewal and revitalising of our minds that Nicholas Lee writes about. The widening and the stretching of our horizons is only possible when we slow down and take our Sabbath rest with God our Creator. I encourage you to take some time in nature yourselves this week. Find your spot in the woods, wherever that may be. It might be your garden, a local park. Here in Gloucester, we're very lucky to have Robinswood Hill so close to the city centre. You might be able to go elsewhere. But however small the place, sit and slow down. Be part of creation and spend some Sabbath time with God. But for now, we can spend just a few minutes experiencing the trees virtually. I invite you to sit in that silence. I'll leave you with a poem by Wendell Berry of his experience of sitting in the woods. I go among trees and sit still. All my stirring becomes quiet around me like circles on water. My tasks lie in their places where I left them, asleep like cattle. Then what is afraid of me comes and lives a while in my sight. What it fears in me leaves me, and the fear of me leaves it. It sings and I hear its song. Then what I am afraid of comes. I live for a while in its sight. What I fear in it leaves it, and the fear of it leaves me. It sings, and I hear its song. After days of labour, mute in my consternations, I hear my song at last, and I sing it. As we sing, the days turn, the trees move. In this poem, Wendell Berry talks of how when you sit still, your mind races. No matter how much you try to leave the world behind, your tasks undone. The fear of leaving them undone. The fear of being confronted with yourself and your fears and your worries come to the fore. But only by sitting with them can we learn to embrace them and see them as part of our song. He sits a while in nature with God at his side. And in that Sabbath space, better understands his weekly existence.
Amen. And giving thanks to the God of all creation, we make our statement of faith together, saying, We believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. We believe and trust in his Son Jesus Christ who redeemed the world. We believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. Amen. Almost every time we turn on the news or open a newspaper, we see stories of darkness. It seems that there is much to be afraid of in this world. Whether we talk about the existential threat from climate change, fears about coronavirus and new restrictions and what they mean for us, concerns about our economy and our jobs, worries for our family and our friends and for our young people. But our Christian faith is based on Jesus, the light of the world, the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So trusting in that light, we pray as we light a candle. Lord, we light a candle for peace in a world of broken promises. Let your light shine throughout your world. Where we heard again this week words of violence, the drums of war, words of fear. Be a beacon of hope to those who despair and a warming fire to those who are weary. Lord, be light in the darkness. Hear our prayer. We light a candle of hope for families and friends who are special to us. We think of a particular person or couple or relationship where we want your light to shine with hope or healing or forgiveness or even celebration. These are your people. This is your light. Please put them together. Lord, be light in the darkness. Hear our prayer. We light a candle for guidance for people who have lost their way. Many have been left behind in the race to acquire and accumulate, to be fashionable or famous. Many have found life too complex and are gradually giving up. Many people we know are struggling at this moment and we hold them before you now. Be their pole star, their pillar of fire, their one true light, and hold them to a true course and a worthy goal. Lord, be light in the darkness. Hear our prayer. We light a candle for ourselves as we face particular issues this week. Perhaps only we know the questions we face and the balancing wire we must walk.
As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Creator God, you give seed for us to sow and bread for us to eat. Make us thankful for what we have received and generous in supplying the needs of others so all the world may give you thanks and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God the Father who clothes the lilies of the field and feeds the birds of the air provide us with all we need for life in its fullness. Amen. May God the Son, who fed the five thousand and turned water into wine, feed us with his life and transform us in his love. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit, who hovered over the waters of creation and formed the world from chaos, form us in the likeness of Christ and renew the face of the earth. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.